Hey, welcome to Northumberland Zoo on YouTube. My name is Maxine and I work here. Uh, on today's video, we've got a lot to get through again. I promise it's not gonna be as long as the other day, but there's been a lot happening in the last week. Um, and before I forget, uh, our photography competition ends this Sunday. So if you want to get your landscape photos in, ready for our competition deadline on Sunday, um, that will be amazing. Cause I know we've got some amazing photographers that come to the zoo and we're looking for someone who can give us the front cover image of our 2025 official zoo calendar. And if you get selected, if your photo gets selected, you get to get a year's membership or an animal encounter um, of your choice. And uh, yes, and obviously you get a free calendar as well with your photo on the front. So uh, don't forget to enter our photography competition. Just remember that it's landscape photos only just because of the orientation of the calendar. Um, make sure they're really high quality photos. And of course, make sure that they're our animals. We we'll have had some mysterious entries of animals that we don't have. But yeah, so that closes this Sunday. If you head over to our website, I'll put a link in the comments as well. You can just upload the photos on our website. Now, last Thursday, I went down to Chester Zoo to collect some new animals for our tropical house. Oh my God, is it cute? <laughs> oh, bless you. Right, cool, let's go. Don't get me crops in. No, it's random. You right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, just put the lights on so you can see in the bed, wouldn't you? Yeah. Exciting times. Yeah. Yeah. Stacey, in this direction, over here, because um, it's away from the water, isn't it? And the windows. Yeah, okay. I've never actually worked with a gooey. Oh. Are they like. Um, are they spooky? Yeah. So, I'm trying to be quiet. Um, so, I'm in the tropical house. The um, Aguti have been in for a couple of days and they're settling in really well. So, I'm just going to meet up with Hannah and Claudia and just see um, how they're getting on. You all right? Yeah, how are you? Yeah, good. More importantly, God. How are they goody? They're good. Yeah? Yeah, they're good. So this morning when we threw some food towards them, they did actually come over and have like, um, not like come over, but they like went over to yeah. the food. Coming what have you got to feed them? So we've got some sweet corn, banana, apple, broccoli. Oh God. They like the fruit. Mm. And apparently they love sweet corn. Someone else needs it, you can pop up tomorrow and have some food for So you can just see one over there. Because we came in here and um, fed them at lunch and realised that the sound of the water is so loud, they probably can't hear the food falling. Ah. So we're saying first thing and last thing, what we'll do is we'll feed them before we turn it on and then after we turn it off, if that makes sense. Okay. Just to help them. Because that's going to draw them closer to us. And it worked, didn't it? Like, yeah. 
Sorry, I'm, just stuck. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm also <laughs> stuck in a tree. <laughs> so you, you were saying the other day when you feed them, they're obviously really shy, but can you just explain that whole thing about falling fruit? Yeah, because they, um, there's one just on the bridge up there. He's on they're, the bridge. They're doing really well at crossing over the bridge. <laughs> and they're really learning that that's the loop that they go around. Oh, yeah, it's just coming, coming um, towards us down the path. Oh no, it's actually gone up onto the... I've not seen them up there before. It's just gone up onto the uh, rock work. The You've rock got rock. really good eyes. Anyway, sorry. Uh, yeah, so basically they, um, where they live, they live in uh, the forest, and they follow the sound of falling fruit so that they know where to go because they're massive fruit eaters. Um, as well as like nuts and seeds and things like that. So um, it's quite good when you look after them in the zoo because you can use that to your advantage. Um, so when you scatter feed them, um, you might not see them anywhere. And then when you scatter feed the food, they respond to that and they all come out so you can check them over. And then gradually as we like build relationships with them, we can get them to come closer and closer to us um, until hopefully eventually we can hand feed them. But yeah, it's like a bit of a, uh, a calling for them. Um, they reckon that some Maguti will actually follow uh, groups of primates as well um, because they know that when they finish with the food they just drop it and then they get the leftovers. So it's going to be really natural for them to be sharing the space with the little primates. It's going to be awesome. I just see a nose popping out. There's one that's more confident than the other. And if you approach them, do they just run away? So they will move out of the way, but that's fine. It's just if you really spook them, they will, um, they'll like stamp their feet and their hair will all go erect and they'll proper like panic and run. So that's what we're trying to avoid. But we've, we've just seen them kind of really calmly um, just move away. They're now eating in front of us, which is progress as well, because I haven't seen them do that yet. So this right here is the exact reason why we're going to obviously wait to open this tropical house to the public. Um, just because we don't want lots of noise and banging on windows and stuff in here until these guys have properly settled down and got to know the area better. Uh, they've been in for 48 hours now, so they're doing pretty good. There's progress there already that the keepers have seen, um, but obviously trying to spot them is quite tricky, so good luck with that but it's just really nice to have them in the exhibit. So the girls are settling in really well here at the zoo. They're starting to really get to know the route around the house. Uh, they really like using that little cement bridge and the little kind of triangular house that the keepers have made from them as well. So they're doing really well. And yesterday we had some more arrivals come down from Five Sisters Zoo in Scotland. Get us over here. One of the marmosets jumped out of the crate pretty much straight away, but then it took another 10 to 15 minutes for the other two marmosets to join him. These are three boys, so they're all siblings, so it's a non-breeding group as we're not part of the Aussie yet. So these pygmy marmosets, as you probably saw from the video, are very, very tiny and also very, very skittish. You know, that is the type of species that they are. So we're going to keep them in that holding area for a good couple of weeks, let them get used to the keepers. We're going to teach them some recall training so that they associate certain noises with certain amazing treats, just so that we can kind of ensure that they understand if we go out into the main exhibit with them, they hopefully come over. So we want to kind of build that relationship before we release them into the uh, house where you probably won't ever see them. So you guys that are keen eyed, uh, I'll be interested to see if you actually see them when we open that house. Uh, we have got some more animals coming into that house as well. 
we're just waiting on confirmed transport dates. So I'll let you know on the next species when they get here. Now, for the moment, obviously it's Easter holidays next weekend. So I don't want to open that house for uh, Easter weekend. I think it's too soon. Uh, the Aguti are still getting used to things. They're quite flighty as well. So we might be aiming to open it for the second week of Easter, but I'll keep you updated on that. It's all to do with the animals. So, you know, they're the priority. And then this morning we actually sent Ghost on his travels. So by the time that this video airs this evening, Ghost will be on a ferry in the middle of the sea between the UK and France. So hopefully he'll be arriving at his collection in France by midday tomorrow. So it's quite a long journey for him, but we managed to box him up really well. And he's going to go and live with some girls in the south of France and actually hopefully produce some cubs. So that's really, really exciting. Anyways. What a action-packed video for today. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you've got any questions or anything, just drop them in the comments below. And if you haven't done already, please do remember to subscribe to our Northumberland Zoo channel and support what we do here at the zoo. And I shall see you next week.